In this video, I show you how to use a shoot-through umbrella to create two incredibly different portraits in a small home studio. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. Now, if you caught the first video in my little mini-series of working in a small home studio, you know that we took some fantastic pictures with just the bare flash. Thing is, you can use other things like umbrellas to take even more fantastic pictures. And I bet the umbrella is the first modifier that you'll get your hands on. And it's easy to see why, because they are so versatile. Now they come in lots of different sizes and two basic types. There's this one which is black on one side and either white or silver on the inside, known as a reflective umbrella. There's also the ones that are just completely white, known as translucent or shoot-through umbrellas, or this one from Westcott which is both reflective and translucent. Now, personally, I prefer to shoot using the translucent umbrellas simply because I can get them really close to my subject or back them off for two entirely different looks for my photographs. And I'm going to do both looks in this video. So let's set the first one up. So I'm joined in the studio by Joel. Say hello, Joel. Keen and enthusiastic, that's perfect. We'll, we'll, we'll get, he is smiling really, he's gonna love it. So we're gonna use the shoot through umbrella to take a, a couple of different types of picture of Joel. The first one is a real dark, kind of low key, moody kind of shot. And to achieve it, I need to get my umbrella as close to Joel as I possibly can without it actually getting into the frame itself and without hitting Joel on the head. That's kind of important. Um, I didn't get you, did I? No, miles away. So we're going to be really close, around about there, I reckon. Now, let's take a couple of meter readings, because that close, it's going to give me a different meter reading on Joel's face compared to the background. So let's start by taking a meter reading off the background, see what we get. Back here, the meter is telling me F4.5. Let's compare that to underneath Joel's chin, which will be around about here somewhere in a second. And I'm getting F11. So as you can see, it's much brighter here, much darker on the background. The background is going to go a nice dark colour using something called the inverse square law. Now, you've got to find out more about inverse square law by going to the Adorama Learning Centre where there is a ton of information and it's really important as a photographer in the studio that you know all about it. Right, so we know the exposure. Let's set up the camera and take some pictures. Okay, so I've set up my camera on a tripod because Joel's not moving and this allows me to take some pictures without having to look through the viewfinder all the time, which is great because we're just going to take some pictures of Joel. Oh, you look fantastic. Okay, that's really good. Okay, Joel, can you just turn your head a little to the side? Yeah, that's fantastic. So as you can see, we're getting very consistent results, lovely moody backgrounds, and these pictures look absolutely fabulous in black and white. Thing is, they're not really that exciting. I mean, they are lovely pictures, but Joel's young. How old are you now? You're nearly 10, aren't you? He's nearly 10. He doesn't want to be sat there. We're going to do a shoot that's much more exciting. You know what we're going to do next? Yeah, he knows what we're going to do next. I'm a bit worried. Joel's a bit excited. <laughs> Let's set it up. <laughs> Okay, so the second shoot is ready to go. And as you can see, a little bit different to the first one. Um, yeah, we'll get onto the balls in a minute, but let's talk about the light first of all. So I've got the same umbrella, the same light, but this time it's backed off a long way from Joel. Now, using the inverse square law, that means that the light that hits Joel is gonna be much more even and about the same brightness as the background. But even though that's a white background, it's not gonna be pure white. You can't really get one light to give you a pure white background. You'll need to check out the Adorama Learning Centre or a later video in this series to find out why. Okay, let's just take a few meter readings and see what we get. So, let's come down here and we'll take a, a meter reading from, from Joel. Okay, and I'm getting F8. Perfect, just what I want. If I meter off the background, that's also F8. And it doesn't matter where I put my meter, F8. We can even come a little bit forward. F8, everywhere I do around this area is F8, thanks to the inverse square law. And that gives us very flat lighting, which is exactly what I want for this shoot, because we're gonna take a very exciting set of pictures. The only thing is, I need my hat. So let me borrow the hat, thank you very much. This is gonna become very useful, and you'll see why in a second. 
Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. Okay, so we can now set up the camera F8. I'm on an ISO 200 because the light has got a little bit further to travel and I want that bigger depth of field that f 8s going to give me. Um, I need to make sure that everything on this shoe is locked down the same. So I've framed this up and I'm going to make sure the zoom doesn't change. I'm going to make sure the exposure doesn't change, the aperture doesn't change, nothing changes. I'm even going to try and make sure that Joel doesn't move too much. Because when we join this together into one large image in Photoshop, that's going to be a big time saver. The hat, well, that's simply there to give something for Joel to aim at. So he's looking towards the camera, but doesn't actually try and hit the camera. That's the idea. So, Joel, really simple. All you're going to do is you're going to throw a ball and you're going to try and knock off the ball on the top of my hat. You reckon you can do that? Yeah? No? <laughs> okay, let's take a test picture first of all before we get too much into this. And that looks absolutely fine. Okay, Joel, uh, have a test shot. Ready? On three. One, two, three. No, you're right. I'm quite safe, aren't I? That, that's, <laughs> that's miles away. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so Joel, what I'd like you to do is get a handful of balls for me. Brilliant. Okay, so you're going to throw all six and see. I mean, numbers, you must get more off with six. Go for it. Go up. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> now these are soft balls, but they, they still, yeah, they, they still sting a little bit, especially uh, Joel's nine. He, he's got a good strong throwing arm on him, but great shot. Okay, so we've got a few shots in the bag, a few basic shots. Now things are going to get a little bit more interesting because we're going to step the tempo up a little bit and we're actually going to take a whole sequence of shots where Joel's just going to continuously throw balls at my head uh, and we'll see what amazing pictures we get. But I should warn you, Joel, I'll be throwing them back. Let's go for it. <laughs> oh! Ow. Here we go. <laughs> oh! Well, that was close. Okay. Don't aim at me. <laughs> I, have, I have enough problems of my own, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're fantastic. Okay, there we go. Balls everywhere. Uh, camera's been hit multiple times, but everything's absolutely fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> absolutely great fun. Wonderful stuff. What we'd like you to do is to have a go at this yourself. We've made an online gallery where you can reproduce this shoot or the previous one, upload it, and let's see what amazing versions of this you can come up with. Now, all I need to do is to get my set of pictures into Photoshop and we'll merge them together to make one final shot. And we're going to do that right now. Uh, look at that, look. The, these things got absolutely everywhere. Um, yeah, it was a great fun shoot to do. I've got lots of fantastic pictures of Joel. I've narrowed it down to five and I've already put them through Camera Raw. And now we're going to use Photoshop to join them together. So let's jump in and see how it's done. So what I've got here is one of the, the pictures, and as you can see, there's a lot of extra area around the picture that we just don't need. That's one of the downsides of shooting in a small home studio. You can't really back up far enough and zoom in or have a wide enough background to actually get what you need. But fortunately, this technique didn't need a big background. And as long as Joel stayed within my little white background, we were absolutely fine. So cropping that away, perfect. Now I've already done that with the other pictures and this is going to be the first picture we're going to use. And what I want to do is I, I want to increase the area of picture to make room for the other four shots. Now we could use canvas size or you can use the crop tool. It's entirely up to you. Get to the same point either way. Now I'm going to add about 300% canvas to the picture like so. I know we've got five pictures, but 300% should be enough because we're going to put them fairly close together. So let's get the next picture from the sequence, which will be this one right here. And we're going to select an all, edit and copy. We'll jump back to our main picture and choose edit 
and paste. Now they should be roughly the same because in theory the camera didn't move and Joel didn't move. Of course that wasn't quite the reality. Joel moved and the camera took a few hits every now and again so there may be just a little bit of wiggle room to do here. So let's just grab this picture and we'll just move it down a little tiny bit like that. But I'm going to drop the opacity down so I can put the two on top of each other and see where they're going to go like so. Okay, with it in the right position, I'll increase my opacity and now we can blend them together. Now blending together is just a matter really of adding in a layer mask. We'll use a reveal all layer mask and I'll get a paintbrush. Let's get a nice big brush and we'll just paint away to reveal the picture behind. And I'm going to keep changing the size and hardness of my brush just so I can blend this in really nicely because we've got two pictures that we want to join together and it gets a little bit tricky sometimes when you have uh, balls that overlap, particularly if it overlaps arms and hands and legs and so on. But that looks pretty good. For example, I think we'll keep that blue ball from that picture and maybe the, the green balls from that picture. Okay, so there we go. Okay, and you can start to see how this can become a little bit more challenging when you get to the edges. Well, maybe we'll go for those two. There we are, that works better. And there's no rights or wrongs. It's a matter of what works best. Okay, so that's two pictures in. Let's go add another one in and we'll show you one more before I go and speed things up a little bit and we'll select it all and we'll copy and we'll go and edit and paste it in. So once again, I'll drop the opacity. I'll get my move tool and we'll just reposition Joel so he's roughly in the right place. Uh, I reckon probably about there somewhere. Yeah, that looks good. Pop the opacity back up. Pop on a layer mask. And then we get our paintbrush and paint back in using black to reveal. Okay, round we go. Uh -huh. And there's a knee there, but there's lots and lots of colored balls down here. So let's go add those in. Yeah, I think that's going to be okay. So I think what we'll do is we'll just take all of the colored balls from that shot. And there's a little orange one there. We'll add that in as well. That looks pretty good. And we'll just tidy up those bits like so. So that puts two of uh, three of my pictures together. And uh, now what we need to do is just do the remaining shots. Now, to speed things up, I'm going to go and do those and you can join me in just a second. So I've just got this last little bit to do on the last shot. It really didn't take too long, but there we are. Just a little bit of time spent getting that nice, neat and tidy, pays dividends, making sure we get all the fingers through. And there we go. Okay, so all of my pictures are now together. As you can see, we've got a few areas where things went up and down slightly. I'm gonna get the crop tool. And once again, I'm just gonna crop into those areas just to tighten up the whole composition. And we can come down a little bit like so. There you go. Now, if there are any areas, small areas, you can use the clone tool just to fill them in. But by and large, that should be it. And of course, you can even add in some extra balls from other shots that maybe are flying through the air or falling on the floor. But once you've done that, that's your final picture completed. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see other videos from the amazing presenters here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do. You've got to click on the subscribe button. <laughs> I'm Gary and Howie, thanks for watching. <laughs>